And as the clock ticks down to election day, a huge ground war is in full swing. Both the Clinton and Trump campaigns working round the clock to win support. And this time, the parties know more about who's voting than ever before, building enormous data banks with details on every single one of America's 225 million voters. That ranges from which brands they buy at the supermarket, what they spend on credit cards, and even what they watch on TV. It's all being used to bombard voters with tailored messages. Michael Crick has been to the key battleground state of Pennsylvania to find out all about it. It's the battle of big data campaigns hoovering up masses of personal detail on 200 million voters. Do you really have a file on every voter in this country? Yeah. And, yes. And, and if you just pick one at random, how, how much would it say about an individual? Literally, you could look and there would be, you could look into thousands of characteristics. A big brother world where your life is captured digitally, then the data analyzed to win your vote. Nowadays, the campaign is right here. The campaign is right at your fingertips. And developments here in America are changing elections in Britain and worldwide. It's a revolution and, and a lot of the old guard um, uh, are somewhat terrified by it. Philadelphia in Pennsylvania is where American democracy was born, where Thomas Jefferson wrote the Declaration of Independence and the Founding Fathers signed it in Independence Hall. Thomas Jefferson later said that the Declaration of Independence was intended to be an expression of the American mind. But now, 240 years on, there's a new revolution in American politics. Thanks to advances in data analysis and digital communications, it's now becoming possible for political leaders to capture the expressions of all American minds. Being right here, you're in ground zero of, of campaign 2016. Trump campaigner Jack Posobiec tramps the streets in his Philadelphia suburb, a swing part of a swing state. An app on his iPhone is a vital campaign tool. Pins on screen tell him which voters in which houses campaign bosses think might be won to Trump. And at each address, he feeds in live to HQ what people tell him. This will go back to a national database that will say, hey, you know, this person in Pennsylvania thinks this way about Mr. Trump or thinks this way about Mrs. Clinton. So then the national people can direct messages, emails, exactly. direct mail to reflect their concerns. Exactly. Or they could even decide, you know, hey, you know, we've got a lot of people that are on the fence here. Maybe it's time for a rally. His app includes people thought to be sympathetic to the Republicans normally, but who seem unimpressed by Trump. Now this one here, 603. Yes. What have you got down? What, have you, what does your list say about them? Swing. Swing. Swing voters. Here. Swing voters. Right. Trying to get a sense of where people stand in the election right now, if, if you don't okay. mind answering. I don't know where I'm standing. Okay. In both. Um, I think they're both criminals. But one thing about Trump, Trump is Trump. But the thing I don't like about her is it, she's more sec secretive. She seems to be veering towards Trump, and the details she's given could later clinch it. Yeah, I mean, she looks like she's going your way. It, but and you've got you've learned a lot about guess, her. So, what do you do with all that information? So, all that information. That's actually as we were talking, I was just flipping through the different tabs in the app and dropping in everything I could find: Christian, uh, special needs, health, social needs, child, child care. Careless, reckless, crooked putting her interests ahead of national security. Don't let Hillary Clinton do it again. What Trump's people hear and say on the doorstep is then pushed through the airwaves. And an English firm, Cambridge Analytica, was paid $5 million in September alone to analyze the data for Trump and help refine his messages. And you know this about every American voter? That's correct, yes. 
Alexander Nick showed me how his firm puts people into groups by psychological characteristics. So these dots here are the individuals in the state of Iowa that, that fit in, fit these characteristics? Absolutely. In fact, we can even drill down to an individually resolved level where we can, we can identify, remove the name, but where you've got the name, age, gender, and you know, somewhere close to four or 5,000 data points on that individuals. So where does the house by house data come from? An amazing range of sources, among them supermarket and credit card transactions, magazine subscriptions, and what people watch on TV. Between 4 p.m. and 9 p.m., that's usually the time that we're out knocking on doors. In South Philadelphia, a Democrat stronghold, Jihad Silufa is out for Hillary Clinton. He's not part of her official campaign, but a trade union group working America. His iPad has a treasure map not of swing voters, but people thought to be Democrats, but who may need some encouragement. It may be that they, they uh, missed an election where they didn't vote, or it may be that they are um, folks that uh, would support the candidate that we are supporting, Hillary Clinton, if they just you know, got, got a knock on the door and had a little bit more information. So uh, which one are you going to? So going Both to sides in this contest now think, thanks indeed right, right to the here. data, that contacting voters face to face is more mm. effective than by phone. When you think about this upcoming election, what do you think the most important issue is? Well, uh, as far as being a working class person myself, it's taxes. Okay. Uh, the most important issue would have to be employment and jobs. Okay. He logs those concerns, but also gets crucial contact details, so the campaign can keep in touch right up to polling day. And then you can just enter your, your cell number there. Because we are not as divided as our politics suggest. Data analysis was pioneered in the two triumphant Obama campaigns, which employ lots of clever mathematicians. They even boasted they knew the names of all 69 million people who voted for Obama. One of the brains behind it all was Jim Messina. We had 12 people on our data team in 2008. We had 165 in 2012. Wow. We ended up using all that data to change the way we dealt with voters. Because in the old days, people were treated like numbers, and I wanted to treat them like individual people and what we knew about them. Yeah. Now I almost think of it as, as circular. Where Mitch have, Stewart was yeah, Obama's director sort of, of battleground states. Right so I would be in the Chicago office, and I had reports every single night that went all the way down to the volunteer level in every single state. Um, and so I could see exactly how many doors were knocked by volunteer, how many conversations they had, what were the results of those conversations, and then that rolled all the way up to a national report. Well, big wheels roll. One example from 2012, the weekend before polling day, worrying data from part of the vital swing state of Ohio made them change an Obama concert with world famous stars. I got 99 pounds, but men ain't one. And so we changed the venue of where Bruce Springsteen and Jay-Z were going to talk to the public to an area in Ohio that we knew we were struggling a little bit. This is real data from uh, the presidential Republican primary. But the Republican side say they've now caught up on big data, especially through their psychological profiling. So depending on what personality type you have, we can take messaging on a particular policy or issue and then tweak it. For example, on gun control or the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms, there's one message for people scared of burglary. And that's the, uh, the picture and the message that you would put on their Facebook page or somewhere like that? Exactly that. But for what they call closed, agreeable types, the message is rather different. And the same issue, gun rights. This is about the father that teaches his son to shoot. But doesn't that illustrate the basic dishonesty of it all? You're you're hiding this message from that person. You're hiding this message from that person. Look, the, the policy of the candidate in this example is, I am supporting the Second Amendment. I am pro-guns. Now, what that means to you as an individual is different for everyone in the, in the United States in this case. A world of leaders more in tune with what citizens think or a world of politicians desperate for office, micro-targeting people and manipulating them. Take your pick. In Europe, 
tough privacy laws make some of this kind of data work illegal. And yet many of these techniques pioneered in America were quietly used in last year's general election in Britain and this year's EU referendum.